I'm very fortunate. Actually, I'm very blessed. Because my wife, Debbie, and I, we happen to live in Hawaii. Now, Hawaii is a beautiful place to live. Year-round, the weather is wonderful. The scenery and the beaches are something to behold. And the people are so warm and welcoming. In fact, there's a local saying here that says, lucky we live Hawaii. Well, for us, it's not luck. It's a true blessing to live in such a beautiful place. I want to talk to you today about finding your place. Now, we're not talking about looking for the best city to live in or, or landing the best job or, or finding your place on the starting five of your high school basketball team. That's not the kind of place I'm talking about. We're talking about discovering and finding your place in God's plan and God's will. And I like to call this your sweet spot. Now, if you're a golfer or a baseball player or a tennis player, you would know what that sweet spot is. It's when your club hits the golf ball at the perfect angle and the ball flies long and straight down the fairway with an effortless swing. It's when the racket hits the tennis ball at the right spot and at precisely the right time and you can feel the power and the torque and the ball goes exactly where you aimed it and bounces exactly where you wanted it to bounce. That's the sweet spot. And so in our relationship with God, the sweet spot is a place we want to be right in the center of his will. There's no better place to be than in the center of God's will. Perhaps you're seeking and searching, or, or maybe you're just restless or, or even bored and unfulfilled. Where do I fit in God's plan? Am I in the right place that God wants me to be? And if not, how do I get there? Do you know that next Sunday is Palm Sunday? the day Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem on a donkey, where the people crowded the streets and laid palm branches and articles of clothing in the path of Jesus and shouted in praise and worshiped him saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This was such an important part of the Christ story, so important that it was recorded by all four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want to take a look at an obscure character in this story. We don't know his name, yet he played such a vital role in this story. And through it all, he found his place, his sweet spot. So who do you think it was? Well, I'm referring to the donkey. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not comparing you to a donkey, but there are some lessons we can all learn from this unassuming animal. And because he didn't have a name, I'm just, I'm just going to call him Donkey. So how did Donkey find his place? Well, there are three lessons I think we can learn from Donkey. Number one, he was available. He was in the right place at the right time when the disciples said that the master was in need of him. He made himself available to the master. To make ourselves available requires a bit of humility and placing our self-serving desires aside. And number two, he was, he was willing. You know, donkeys have a reputation for being stubborn and headstrong. Well, not this one. When the master needed him, he willingly obeyed and went. Wasn't it Jesus who said, Not my will, but thine be done? Lord, help us to soften our hearts and be willing to surrender in obedience to your will. And number three, it wasn't about him. You know, when Donkey walked down that parade route in Jerusalem with the roaring crowd cheering, he knew it wasn't about him. It was all about Jesus, lifting Jesus higher, elevating him so that he, Jesus, would get the attention and praise, so that he, Jesus, would get the recognition, so that Jesus would get the honor and the glory. You see, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about him. Donkey found his place, his sweet spot, and that was right in the center of God's will. My prayer is that you would do the same. Be available, be willing, and remember, it's not about you, but it's all about Jesus. Find your place today. God bless you. Live your